Hi there, this is Rob at Reason101.net and I'm here to explore yet another creation that I made which is called the Mono FM 6 Operator Playground. Um, basically what this is, it's an FM synthesis unit or an FM synthesizer and what you can do, um, it's kind of, it's modeled after the DX7, the Yamaha DX7 which had 32 different algorithms um, and each of those algorithms used six different oscillators or operators uh, to affect your sound. So what I did in this type of system is I created, there's um, actually three or four different templates. Uh, I'll just show them to you. If you click on open here, you can see there's an FM4 operator unit. There's a FM6, which has algorithms one to 10. Then the other one, the FM6, has the algorithms 11 to 20. And then the third one has 21 to 32. So the third one has 12 algorithms in it. And so basically that's what you're seeing here. You're seeing each of the algorithms on each of the channels in the top mixer. Okay. Um, so you've got all 12 here. And you can, um, I'll just let you listen to the raw output really quick. Okay. So what this knob up here, this is a, a, the sequencer for your entire system. So you can switch between different algorithms. Okay. Um, right now it's not, it doesn't sound that great because what we've got is um, everything is basically all set exactly the same for each of the operators. So where the fun comes in is when you start changing some of the parameters on the combinators. Um, so right now we've got um, 12 different ones. You can change this dynamically. Okay, you don't have to wait for it to sync up to anything in your song. It automatically changes. Okay. So that's the way this works. Um, the other thing that we have is sometimes the signal can get a little out of control. So we have a limiter in here. Which... Uh, yeah, that's the sound when it's turned off. When we turn it on, we can increase the gain or decrease the gain. Um, we can change around with uh, a compressor if you want. And you have the comp ratio and the comp threshold and a soft knee as well if you need it. So that's pretty much it on how you can sequence the different sounds and go from one algorithm to the other. When you start moving down into the unit um, is where you get pretty intricate. In, um, intricate. You've got six different operators, so each of these combinators deals with one of the six operators. Okay, and you can change around the different parameters on these operators and you'll get a different sound out of it. Um, when you're dealing with FM synthesis, the two main aspects of it, at least this is what I found, is the two main aspects are the amp envelope and the pitch um, of the different oscillators. So what Rotary 1 does is it deals with the pitch of your different oscillators. When you start changing them around, you get some really different, interesting sounds out of it. Um, you can also change the frequency, like how much the frequency is being provided to the next oscillator by changing your mod wheel. Okay, so now you start shaping a bit of a, a bit more of a sound out of it. Um, you can also fine tune it. This fine tunes the frequency of the oscillator. Um, and the other thing you can do is you can change the attack of your sound. Um, you can change the attack, the decay, the release of the amp envelope. Um, you can increase the sustain of the amp envelope. And you can change from a sine wave for the oscillator to a saw. And start doing this on all, all six of them is where you start hearing a real difference in the sound. Okay. Now the other aspect to this type of system is that uh, what I've done is I've always made operator six 
be the operator that feeds back into itself because in FM synthesis, usually one of the operators is feeding back into itself or sometimes it's feeding back into another operator. So it gets a little complex there. But um, the way everything is routed, you can use operator six for the feedback or the self oscillation. And that's controlled by knob rotary number four on this device here. Okay, so this is less feedback. And over here, this is more feedback over here. So that's true of every different algorithm. Okay. So if you start playing around with this, um, you can get some really different kinds of sounds for it. I'm not really sure what you would do with it, um, other than basically uh, sequence in some different modulations and definitely automate a lot of it. Um, it creates a lot of unexpected results, but uh, have a go at it and see what you can what you can do with it. I'd be interested to see what you guys come up with. Um, and this is going to be available in my uh, refill on August 1st. And also, um, one other thing with this type of system is it's, it's a mono system only, so you can't really do chords with it. Uh, so the way it's set up, you can really you can use it only as a lead device. Um, if you were actually going to set it up as to be polyphonic, um, you'd have to actually duplicate this whole device, um, and then you'd have if you had two devices, um, if you had like each set of these six different combinators, and then another set of these six different combinators, then you'd have two voice polyphony. Otherwise, you, you've only got the single one voice through the whole system because that's the way Thor is set up. So right now, it's just a, a simple one note. It is what it is, and this is what you get. So play around with it. Um, see what you can do with it. And... Uh, Hopefully it inspires you. Um, and the other thing, the last thing I should tell you about this is that in the sequencer, you'll see um, all the note lanes here are exactly the same. You definitely want to keep that the way it is. Okay, you don't want these note lanes to change. Um, so keep the same notes on every single operator combinator lane, and uh, then you'll uh, you'll get more out of the system. I think. Um, so that's pretty much it, and uh, thanks a lot for listening. And come visit me at reason101.net.